Lord to Jesus, we greet the beloved Church and to all those who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up where we're going to read the word of the Lord in Psalms. Psalms 116. We're going to read a couple of verses for our meditation. Psalm 116, verse 1. Thus says the word of the Lord, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. And now verse 12, verse 12. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord God, we ask that you may continue to speak to our hearts, Lord, tonight, because we pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The Lord, I believe that the brother didn't share the revelation about this song when we sang this song. Uh, Spirit of Santo, Holy Spirit, the Lord would send upon us a blessing and He would visit our hearts, renewing therefore our faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the Lord, He, he is a wonderful God because before we arrived in this place, the Lord was already here, waiting for us. Amen. This place that it was consecrated to Him, a place in which we may, in freedom, seek His face and praise His name. Amen. The word tonight, it speaks about the love and the gratitude towards God for His salvation. So the psalmist here, he will express from his own account the gratitude, his, his love towards the Lord. Because the Lord heard his voice. Because the Lord, He knows each one of us. The Lord knows the voice of all the ones who are His redeemed. In the same way that our Father knows the voice of His Son, the need of His Son. In the same way, our Lord He hears He hears our voice. And He understands He understands our supplication. And he inclines his ear. The psalmist said that he inclines 
he inclines his ear to our prayer. We think, knowing how small we are, the Lord inclining his ears towards our prayers. This is something wonderful, right? The Lord inclining his ear in order to hear us. Before our world that is out there pleading to their own gods. And many times they are not heard. When Elijah he confronted the prophets of Baal and this confrontation was that's how it happened. The God of whom sends fire from heaven that will be the true God. And the word says that the prophets of Baal pleaded to their God. They shouted to their God. And Baal did not answer to them. Right? And the word says that when then Elijah repaired the author and he made a supplication to the Lord the Lord sent fire from heaven right? so our God is not a God that is deaf but it is a God that is paying attention to our prayers our God is a God that hears us is a God that answer to our prayers with fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call upon his him as long as I live. So this gratitude of the psalmist, he, he will serve, the psalmist will serve the Lord, it will call upon the Lord for as long as he lives because the Lord heard his supplication. So there was there there was there a love that was reciprocated. I love the Lord but the word says that before we loved the Lord, He loved us first. And this love was a love that was revealed in Jesus because God loved the world in such a way that He sent His only Son to die on our behalf. On behalf of our salvation. So this love of God was revealed in Jesus there on the cross of Calvary. And the psalmist here continues, I love the Lord because He delivered me from death, He delivered me from the anguish of hell. So uh, was, it was an expression of gratitude. And we remember, I'd like to remind you that this month, uh, Maranatha Church is, is celebrating a month of, called the Month of Dedication. We are dedicating to the Lord our lives and calling upon the Lord and praising the Lord 
for all the benefits that he has given us. And if we stopped here to number all the benefits that the Lord has given us, it would be they will be countless. They will be countless. What am I going to give to the Lord? What am I give to going to give to the Lord? What shall I render to the Lord for all His benefits toward me? What do we have to give to the Lord? I'd like to remind uh, the story of Hannah, that woman that was sterile. She could not generate a child. And she, every year, as was the tradition there, she would go up to the temple. The families would go to seek the Lord in Silo, on the temple. And the only, she asked only for one thing, Lord, I want a son, I want a child. And if you give me this son, this son, I'll give him back to you. This son, I know that the son is going to be a gift from God to me, but I want to give this son back to you, Lord. So it was the it illustrates the dedication of this woman because she wanted a son not for herself. She wanted to generate some something inside of a womb, not for herself, but for the Lord. My brethren, the Lord, He wants to generate in us. He wants to generate something, not to massage our ego, not to strike our vanity, but so that it would be offered to the Lord. Have you prayed? Has the Lord given you a spiritual gift? Who was generated inside of you a spiritual gift? But did you ask? When you asked for the spiritual gift, it was not for you. It was so that the name of the Lord would be uh, praised in your life. So that woman, she generated that son called Samuel. That woman that was, she had been forsaken because at that time, a woman that could not generate a child would be pushed aside. She would be rejected. That woman that was anguished, that woman that every year would go there with anguish in her heart, but she would cry at the Lord's feet. And then the Bible says that she gave that child to serve the Lord. So Samuel spent his whole life serving the Lord. And Hannah, Hannah never for, forgot about Samuel. The Bible says that she went back to her home. She gave Samuel to the prophet Eli, to the priest Eli. And the word says that she would needle a tunic for Samuel. And as she was needling, she was actually involved with the work of the Holy Spirit. She was uh, connected with Samuel. And she would needle and she would think, how Samuel is, Lord? And when the time came, every year, for her to go back to the temple, she would then deliver the tunic to Samuel, and she would see Samuel again. My brother, the work of the Holy Spirit involves dedication. What 
what shall I render to the Lord? What do the Lord want from my life? Do you think that the Lord wants material goods? No. What the Lord wants from us is our dedication to Him. He is to give worth to His call. Right? And so the Bible says, What shall I render to the Lord for all His benefits toward me? What shall I give to the Lord? And it says, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Right? The Lord has shown tonight in a, a spiritual gift that an angel would enter here with many boxes, boxes, uh, uh, gift boxes. And particularly, the sister that had the vision, she saw that she would, no, the box was given to the sister and inside of the box there was a heart that was pulsating. It was a gift for that woman. And sometimes we, you may have been may be going through trials and tribulations. Maybe your heart is hurt, is saddened, is heavy. But my sister, tonight the Lord is giving you a new heart, a heart that is pulsating, a heart that speaks speaks of life. A heart is responsible to pump the blood throughout our body. If the heart stopped, then there is no more life. There is no more blood pumping. But you leave this place, my sister, with a new heart pumping. If you have faced a situation in which you don't see hope anymore, know that the Lord is your hope. Know this. Continue to live. Continue fighting. Continue to, to dedicate to the Lord. Because this brings joy to the heart of, of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, my beloved brethren, the message from the Lord for us tonight is so that we might have gratitude in our hearts. And we should always know that we are servants, we are debtor, we, we owe to the Lord. Because when we are born, we are already born with a death to the Lord. But, but the Lord but the Lord wants to see in us a heart that is filled with thankfulness, a heart that loves the Lord above all things. And this month, the Lord has called His Church to dedicate. Last Sunday here, in the morning, we saw Pastor Jim, Pastor, the pastor bringing a message so that we, as a church, could set aside one day to the Lord, to dedicate that day, dedicate that day to God, our gratitude. We know that the times, they are all rushed. We are always in a hurry, but the Lord wants His church to dedicate themselves to Him. They are in, in Egypt when Pharaoh realized that the people of God 
was had had time to seek the Lord, to pray to the Lord, Pharaoh gave an order, increase the load, the work out, the working hours of these people, put these people to make bricks. Why? Because with this strategy, Pharaoh wanted all the time for himself. And the king of this world, which is the Pharaoh, he wants to steal our time. He wants to make us grow, grow tired so that we may not dedicate our time to the Lord so that people might come home already tired. Right? And this is the strategy of Pharaoh. When the Lord had already promised to take the, the Jewish people out of Egypt, then the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh thought, oh, no, let's put these people to work for me. These people, they don't need time to be praising their God. My brethren, so the Lord, this month, He wants to awaken us this feeling. The Lord wants to awaken us this spirit of adoration so that we might give worth in this last moment. The church is living the last moment upon the faith, face of the earth. And the Lord wants us to have a thankful heart. What the Lord wants from us is a life of dedication. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You're going to sing a song? With a song?
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The church will stand up. We're going to have still a word of glorification from the part of the church for the benefits, for the way in which the Lord has blessed us, for the benefits of the Lord to our lives. We're going to have a word of glorification to the name of our Lord. Praise you because you have given us many blessings, Lord. We are here to honor you, to praise the Lord. We love you, Lord. Receive our praise, we pray to you in the name of Jesus. What am I give? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. This is this is the message of the Lord toward us tonight. I'm going to pray to the Lord, bring this message to a close, this service to a close. Lord, we, together with our Son, want to praise your name. Your church has been before you calling upon uh, your name. We praise you, Lord, because we have done great things in the midst of your church. We praise you, Lord, because our supplication, they have come up to heaven and you have answered, answered our prayer. We praise you, Lord, because until now, to this day, you have been with us we praise you, Lord, for the acquisition of that property in Cor Springs, Lord. Let's be your name, Lord, because you have answered the plea and the desire of the church. Let's be your name for the healings, Lord, for the gifts that the spiritual gifts have been manifested in the midst of your church. We praise you, Lord, and we ask that you continue with us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. We have come to the end of our service. If by any chance you still need a prayer, you need a, a word, remain on where you are seated. And we will hear, we, the ushers and deacons, we will be ready to give assistance. Our next service is going to be on Thursday, right? At 8 o'clock p.m. And to all the peace of the Lord.